Let's talk about the all important code compliance because codes are a huge uh, issue now and especially with ADA, but then local codes. So talk a little about the, the story of the codes on this project. Do you want to talk, lead that? Do you that? want to elaborate? Well, I will, I will start. Okay. Um, you know, any of the universities or any for rent property anymore, you have Federal Fair Housing, ANSI A and ANSI B, and then ADA comes into that criteria, which is, is kind of a misused term ADA. It's just slang. You have in California, California Building Code. And now with ANSI A and ANSI B, which is applying to California Building Code, they have dimensional criteria. And all of the suites that are a single bathroom have to meet this accessible or adaptable criteria dimensionally. So when we first started in the project, the design team had the configuration, the width and the depth uh, kind of inverted or backwards. And when I was working with, with the W.L. Hickey Sons team, we started out there and I, as a resource, I have to say, okay, you're going down the road the wrong way, we'll draw, design what you need. But here are the limitations. It will not meet this code, this code, or this code. And it's up to the Steinberg Group to go to the city of Palo Alto and ask and try and guarantee or, or achieve a waiver for a design deviant that, deviance that may be out of compliance. Well, it came back, yeah, you know, you guys are right, we got to switch this around. And while we were working through the dimensional criteria, now the framing starts changing somewhat. And they want it just a little bit bigger and just a little bit deeper and to add a soap dish, one on the left, one on the right. And, and the, the team at Best Bath is going, well, this is our 10th revision, which this is what it takes, sometimes many revisions to get the end product. And then again, we were dealing with a, an architect from a different country. And at one point they were looking for little two inch tiles, which would have been a nightmare just from the cleaning standpoint. It wouldn't look very good either. It wouldn't look very good, it just, <laughs> you know, but this was their idea, you know, based on the materials they typically use. Right, right. So anyway, we go through this whole thing and now we're signed off. And it was a task. And a tremendous amount of patience on everyone's part because we kept revising and revising and revising. But once we got the go ahead, W. Hickey and Son, they just instantly said, okay, we're going forward, let's do it. They issued their contract, and we started tooling and getting ready for deliveries. If I can say one thing on the ADA, the ADA is a moving target. It, it seems like every six months to a year, it is changing, little rubs come in, they learn something, they change it. So you have that one component, and then you have to compound that with every building department has a different interpretation, So, which means something else changes. So a lot of times we have manufacturers that say, well, this is ADA compliant, and you get it, you go to the city and they're going, not by our rules, and we yes. see, and, and those are the rules that are going to count. So you need someone with flexibility. And so. And, but that's also, to go tie back to an earlier point, that that's where the relationship is so important. Right, yes. That you've worked together, you've had a successful track and, record. It's where you can have a dialogue between the building department, the manufacturer, yeah. and yourself, yeah. and you come up with a solution, and there's nothing more frustrating like, well, here's your solution, this is the way we make it, and you- We and can't you, do and that. You, yeah, we can't do that, and you're, and you're so going- And Palo Alto's probably one of the toughest yeah, jurisdictions to build it. Yeah.